Yeah, this is again. Okay. So the next one is is alkyne. The general formula of alkyne is CN H2N minus 2. Okay. And the basic difference, uh, like the, one of the most very important difference we have in the properties of alkane, alkane and alkyne is alkyne is acidic in nature. Acidic in nature. Why it is acidic? Because it has sp hybridized carbon atom and the hydrogen attached to this carbon, like for example, you see, we have CH3, C triple bond, CH. If it reacts with a base, suppose NaOH, then we have here acid-base reaction. Okay. This hydrogen, since the carbon is sp hybridized here, this carbon is sp hybridized, this hydrogen is acidic in nature because of highly electronegative carbon atom here. And this OH minus and H plus combines forms H2O. And we get a salt over here, which is the sodium salt CS3C triple bond C minus Na plus. This is the salt we get. So one very basic difference in properties uh, of alkane, alkene, and alkyne is among the three, alkyne is the one which is acidic in nature. Right? That is very important of property we have. We have different different methods by which we can prepare alkyne. Okay, like a few examples we have already done. Uh, similar way, one more step you need to go. You will get the uh, product, final product. Like for example, you see, write down the heading method of preparation. Method of preparation. Method of preparation. Suppose we have, first we are having here from gem dihalides. We know what is gem dihalides? Two halogen atom present on the same carbon atom. Look at this reaction. The reaction is R CH2 CX H. This molecule, when it is allowed to react with alcoholic KOH, remember the preparation of alkene. We have done the same reaction only once we have done with monohalides, right? So we had monohalides, we have done it once. HX goes out and we'll get the pi bond. When we have alcoholic KOH, first we get alkene. RCH double bond CXH. And then again, in the next step, we are using a different base that is NaNH2. Again, HX comes out, it forms RCH triple bond RC, C triple bond CH. This is what we get <clears throat> the final product. Okay, now here you see one very important thing. <clears throat> In the next step, we cannot use alcoholic KOH. NaNH2, soda amide, we call it as. Soda amide. It is a stronger base than alcoholic KOH. Stronger base than alcoholic KOH. Okay, so alcoholic KOH is not strong enough so that it can remove hydrogen from an sp2 hybridized atom carbon atom right base 
the role of base is what it takes oh h plus from this so since it is sp2 hybridized carbon atom so it is difficult to remove hydrogen for this base alcoholic koh hence in the second step we require a stronger base and hence we use nanh2 right forms alkene alkyne like this similar way we have alcoholic koh acid base reaction and then base takes hydrogen from the beta carbon uh, and the reaction proceeds same reaction we have so i'm not going to drill off all this <clears throat> okay we can also prepare we can also prepare alkyne from vicinal dihalides exactly same reagent and same reaction we have i'll write down here from vicinal dihalides vicinal dihalides you see we have carbon carbon attached with hydrogen here and two halogen atom like this alcoholic koh hx goes out it forms first an alkenyl halide which is this double bond carbon with x and then the next step we are using a stronger base nanh2 forms an alkyne so all these informations you should have that nanh2 is a stronger base than koh this you have to memorize done okay the next one is tetrahalogen tetrahalogen means if you have tetrahaloalkanes from that also we can prepare third one write down dehalogenation reaction or simply dehalogenation from tetrahaloalkanes r c c x x H. reagent we are using zinc dust so when you heat with this with the zinc dust at around 300 degrees celsius temperature you don't have to memorize first this uh, halogen goes out x2 will get a double bond x and x further you heat this with the same reagent temperature you need to increase a bit and then this x2 also goes out forms an alkyne this is the product we get we can also have coal base synthesis for the preparation of alkyne we take here hc double bond c h c double bond o o minus k plus same thing we have just the double bond we'll have over here so that we can get one more pi bond and we'll get an alkyne here it goes under electrolysis it goes under electrolysis and it forms 
H C triple bond C H plus two molecules of C O two H two and K O H. This is what we get. Very important reaction we have, fifth one write down, is laboratory preparation. How do we prepare? Acetylene in laboratory. Write down in lab, acetylene is prepared by, in lab, Acetylene is prepared by the hydrolysis of calcium carbide. Very important reaction. Yeah, I'll go back. We also we have seen seen same thing up to four carbon atom it is gas only done yeah so in lab write down in lab acetylene is prepared by the hydrolysis of calcium carbide. The hydrolysis of calcium carbide. Calcium carbide is this Ca2 plus C triple bond, C negative charge, and negative charge. This is calcium carbide. The structure is this, we write, but the molecule is obviously CaC2. When it goes under hydrolysis to H2O, it forms acetylene CH triple bond CH and slaked lime, which is CaOH whole twice. Important reaction. In J also, they have asked this. Okay, one more method of preparation we have. This is first method. One more method we have in which we take chloroform. Chloroform, the formula is CHCl3. If you have CHI3, it is iodoform. General name is haloform. Okay, halogen. So, haloform. So, chloroform, when it reacts with silver, 6 AG. It forms AgCl precipitate and we get acetylene, which is this. This two reaction we have, both reactions are important here. Okay, now one last method we have in which we can prepare higher alkenes from the smaller, smaller one. Means one alkene can be converted into the another alkyne. Sorry, not alkene, alkyne. Okay, so <clears throat> right on preparation of higher alkynes. Higher alkynes. Higher alkynes can be prepared by the help of Grignard reagent. Grignard reagent is RMGX. 
I have discussed Grignard reagent before. Yes or no? Little bit of information about it. Have I discussed? Yes, Grignard reagent. So we have R minus MGX plus here, right? So what happens in this? This Grignard reagent is allowed to react with any smaller alkyne. Suppose we have HC triple bond CH. So we know this hydrogen is acidic. So Grignard reagent with active hydrogen gives acid base reaction. So it forms an alkane RH and HC triple bond C minus MGX plus we get. Okay, we are not concerned with this alkane. If you want to get higher alkyne, then again here you add alkyl halide, Rx. So with Rx, MgX takes this X minus, forms MgX2, and R will get attached to the terminal carbon, which is this. So this is a higher alkyne we get from the smaller one. Done. Okay, so properties you see, physical properties we have similar only, like uh, melting point, boiling point you know, it increases with mass and decreases with branching. So that's common. We are not going to do that. We'll see some chemical properties, chemical reactions here. Chemical reactions of alkynes are also very much similar to alkene. Okay, you can easily correlate and memorize this. First reaction we have hydrogenation. Hydrogenation, we all know, it is an addition of hydrogen in presence of a catalyst. Correct. So suppose we have an alkyne, R, C triple bond, CH, reacts with H2 in presence of a catalyst, Ni, high temperature. It forms an alkene. We know this reaction. Both hydrogen get attached on the same side. Again, we do the hydrogenation of this one. Nickel, high temperature, you will get an alkane, RCH2CH3. Very simple reactions. I guess you don't have any doubt in this. <clears throat> okay. We can use any catalyst here. We can use nickel, we can use platinum, we can use palladium, many catalysts we can use. But when you use nickel catalyst, nickel catalyst, the reaction is called, this hydrogenation reaction is called sabatier sandrans reaction. sabatier sandrans reaction. It's a name reaction, you keep this in mind. Okay, second one you see. Hydrogenation. This reaction also we have discussed, I'll just show you. Suppose we have an alkyne CH triple bond CH. 
right? Hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen, right, in presence of various catalyst. So we can use H2 with PDBaSO4 and we heat this. Or we can also use H2 with Na liquid NH3. H2 with Na plus NH3 liquid. It is Na NH2 only birch reduction that we have. So when you have H2 PDBaSO4, it gives you cis alkene, right? Here cis is not possible, but we'll get this. Or if you write down this CH3, C triple bond, CCS3, on addition of water, sorry, H2, you'll get cis alkene, which is this. H, H, CH3, CH3, cis you will get. We know this gives you cis reaction. This gives you trans. In the first one though, we'll get this only. We'll get CH2, double bond CH2. But if you have the second one, in the second one, you will get trans, C double bond C, CS3, CS3, H, and H. We have discussed the, you know, this reaction again in alkyne chapter. We'll get this. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> Just a second, guys. Okay. <clears throat> There is one more reaction in this we have where we use B2H6, diborane. Write down. Third one, reduction of alkyne or simply you write down reduction with diborane. What is the formula of diborane? Anyone? Formula of diborane is <clears throat> B2H6. Okay, it is a dimer of BH3, borane, right? B2H6. So alkyne reacts with B2H6 and the reaction follows with acidic hydrolysis. So C triple bond C, R dash, or I'll take R only. First, it is allowed to react with B2H6. And in the second step, we'll get here H plus H2. In this one, what you have to memorize, the product would be a cis alkene. 
So all these reactions you see, we are getting alkene only because it is reduction. Triple bond converts into a double bond since hydrogen is getting added and cis alkene we get. Okay, I think uh, all of you, can you see the screen? It's, uh, is it frozen? Yes, all of you can see properly. Bharat, you can rejoin then. Okay, next write down the reaction with HX. Hydrogen halide. Remember the reaction of HX with alkene. What rule we follow over there? HX with alkene. What rule we follow? Markovnikov rule. Right? So here also the reaction follows Markovnikov rule. Okay. The reaction follows here Markovnikov rules. You know what is Markovnikov rule, the negative part of the reagent. Okay. So first we get, suppose we have a reaction RC triple bond CH with HX. So negative part of the reagent will get attached to the carbon atom, which has lesser number of hydrogen. We'll get CH2. Further, it reacts with HX. It forms gem dihalides where both halogen atom get attached to the same carbon atom and we'll get this. Markovnikov rule in both step you need to follow. Carbon with X will get a negative. No, it's not like that. See what happens if you have this uh, halide over here. Right. It's not like there is a carbocation intermediate forming over here. Right. Both H and X will get attached at the same time. Okay. Okay, Swaraj, fine, not a problem. Yeah. 
yeah so i was talking about this uh yes so I, this reaction you see it's not like the carbocation forms over here right both h and x will get attached to the carbon atom simultaneously at the same time both will get attached okay if carbocation forms then you can say the positive charge over here because of a uh, minus i effect of halogen this won't be stable hence it won't form but here the carbocation is not forming there okay if you uh, look at the mechanism here right this reaction takes place in presence of a uh, mercurinium and i'll tell you since you have asked this uh, a question i'll just explain i'll tell you the mechanism of this one wait uh you write down here hg 2 plus okay this reaction takes place in presence of hg 2 plus ion okay how the reaction proceeds you see in the first step you have this alkyne rc triple bond cr with hg2 plus okay then this pi bond attach with this hg2 plus and will get a cyclic mercurinium ion in between which is this c double bond c r and this hg2 plus 2 plus here forms a cyclic ring like this cyclic mercurinium ion we call it as then what happens from hx from hx we get x minus and x minus will attack to one of the carbon atom right when this x minus attached to one of the carbon atom okay this sigma bond the ring that we have here it breaks and this goes on to this mercury so it forms r c h g plus because it takes electrons one positive charge will get reduced double bond c x here we have and this side we have r we get this okay now the h plus that you have over here this h plus will get attached to this and hg plus will come out correct so we'll get here r i'll write down this this is okay so we'll get here r c double bond c x r and h will come over plus hg2 plus will go out then the same thing you know we have to repeat again here same thing we need to repeat again this hg2 plus forms a cyclic mercurinium ion here so we'll have this r ch this pi bond is about to break cx and r we get this here again we have hx so x minus from this it will attack on this carbon atom or this carbon atom right so this x minus attacks on the same carbon and this goes up so the point is here your concern is the positive charge that forms on this carbon should will be unstabilized because of the electron don electron withdrawing nature of this halogen which is not forming here it forms a ring we don't have an intermediate carbocation here that's why we have this understood right again you have to proceed the same thing here from here we'll get the answer
okay so mechanism is not you need don't need to know the mechanism you just you just need to know that will get a gem dihalides in this reaction okay this mechanism anyway is not that important yes so uh next reaction we have addition of hcn hydrogen cyanide hydrogen cyanide rc triple bond ch when reacts with hcn the reagent we are taking here cucl temperature around 700 770 degree celsius and it forms ch2 or i'll write down here r ch double bond ch single bond cl okay so basically what happens like hcl h plus comes over here and cn minus comes over here okay we'll get the product here H plus and CN minus will get attached. Which one are you there? Which one are you there? Previous re which reaction you are talking about? What's up? this one you see this one i was talking about markovnikov rule in this just to write down the product you can write down product easily once you follow markovnikov rule this two carbon atom we have the one which has hydrogen atom and this one we don't have any hydrogen atom so x minus will get attached to the carbon atom which has no hydrogen here that is what the product will write mechanism is different right markovnikov rule we generally follow to write down the product directly in one step yes yeah okay so we'll get this few more reactions are there we'll finish this up uh, we don't have much to do next write down i think the last uh, two reaction we have write down oxidation oxidation of alkyne in ncert they haven't given the reaction much okay we are doing uh, like we're not following ncert at least over here right it's not uh, you know for comparative ncert organic chemistry is not that good okay write down acidic or alkaline kmno4 acidic or alkaline acidic or alkaline kmno4 breaks alkyne into two parts into two parts
and forms and forms acids carboxylic acid with example you will understand suppose we have rc triple bond ch oxidation we are doing reagent is acidic or alkaline kmno4 this triple bond just you need to break write down cooh with this carbon cooh with this carbon so product would be rc double bond ooh and hc double bond ooh especially for these kind of reactions oxidation you just know how to write down the product mechanism they won't ask you ever okay mechanism is not at all required in competitive exam also you just need to know how to write down the product suppose we have a h over here hc triple bond ch goes under oxidation reaction it gives you formic acid two molecules of formic acid okay but we have one uh, change over here one exception in fact what happens here two reaction i'll write down this gives you this i am taking here acidic kmno4 but with this reaction if you are taking alkaline kmno4 alkaline kmno4 it forms oxalic acid this one is oxalic acid so this is an exception we have for exception we can't do anything this is an exception so acidic it gives formic acid with alkaline it gives oxalic acid and this reaction is an exception copied okay next reaction write down ozonolysis in ozonolysis what happens similar kind of reaction we have we have alkyne suppose we have uh, r dash c triple bond cr with o3 it gives ozonide first you see this reaction you'll find it is a similar reaction we have but this sigma bond would be there there the sigma bond breaks here we have three bonds so one will be there as this this one it forms first okay and then if you do the hydrolysis of this one h2o hydrolysis it gives you r dash c double bond o c double bond o r this is the product we get diketone it forms this reaction is there in aldehyde ketone chapter also one additional point in this is what if this diketone goes under oxidation with hydrogen peroxide it converts into carboxylic acid rcooh plus r dash cooh this is not that important if you want you can write it down.
Okay, obviously you'll feel like there are so many reactions. How do we memorize it? So let me tell you in one go, you won't be able to memorize all this. Okay, with practice, you'll give some time. Then slowly you will get to know that, okay, this could be the product. And organic chemistry, you always remember, options are always, you know, half of the information. You always get the idea that what could be the possible product in the given reaction. Okay. Slowly, with when you give time a bit more, then you will understand, and it then it then it will be easy for you to memorize also, because there are so many things that we need to know. I would say once you you know uh, understand the concept of GOC properly plus the reaction mechanism, then it will be very easy for you to memorize all these things. Okay, but the problem is in school syllabus and all. There's nothing called reaction mechanism. They won't teach much because not then the syllabus. But for competitive exam, you need to understand those how carbocation forms, what are the process of rearrangement we have, free radical mechanism, how free radical mechanism, how free radical forms, what are the mechanism we have. There are so many things. So that we do actually in the class. But this year, in every year in 11th class, is very difficult to do. That's why I always take up initially when we start the grade 12 uh, you know, classes. So that we'll discuss over there. I am sure when we finished reaction mechanism, you will be able to understand uh, most of the reactions easily. And uh, obviously I am not saying you don't have to memorize things. There also you have to memorize, but uh, you can have a balance between the two, where to mug up, where to understand what concept we have, how to relate concepts in order to memorize the reactions. Those things helps you a lot. One last reaction in this we have, the acidic nature of alkyne. Write down the last one, acidic nature of alkyne. In the beginning only I discussed that alkynes has acidic hydrogen because of sp hybridized carbon atom and, and hence it shows acidic uh, properties. So reaction with metal you see, reaction with metal, I'm taking sodium here. Write down alkyne reacts with metal. Alkyne reacts with metal and and evolve hydrogen. Alkyne reacts with metal and evolves hydrogen gas because of its acidic property. So suppose we have a reaction 2R, single bond C, triple bond CH with metal. Okay, so metal provides electron and in presence of that electron, this hydrogen can go out easily and it forms 2R C triple bond C minus which takes Na plus, so we'll have a sodium salt of it and hydrogen gets released in this reaction. This is acid base reaction, you can say. It forms salt and hydrogen gas removes. Okay, clear? So this is it for hydrocarbon chapter, okay? Many reactions we had done in this. The mechanism part of few reactions like hydrolysis, dehydration, okay? That we'll discuss in detail in reaction mechanism. You will have a, a you know, better idea of that. But here the chapter hydrocarbon is finished. Next class, uh, Yes, we have oxidative ozonolysis. I will discuss that in reaction mechanism. Reductive ozonolysis, we have oxidative ozonolysis. You won't get aldehyde in that case. You will get acid. I'll just give you one example here. Suppose you have RC um, triple bond, C uh, H over here and CH2. For example, this, if you go with O3 Zn H plus H2O, when zinc is present, it is reductive ozonolysis. 
and reductive wedge analysis gives you aldehyde like this okay but when you have this reaction r c double bond c h r r with o3 and then in the second step we are not using zinc when zinc you do not use then it is oxidative ozonolysis so we have the mechanism of this also we'll discuss in reaction mechanism and in this case when you have oxidative ozonolysis you won't get aldehyde but you get acid like you see this bond you break everything will be same you'll get ketone plus the another molecule you will get aldehyde first but this won't be the final product this won't be the final product. further it oxidize into acid so only one thing you have to keep in mind in oxidative ozonolysis carboxylic acid you will get you won't get aldehyde ketone if forms fine you will get ketone only in reductive ozonolysis zinc is present then aldehyde can form here aldehyde won't form we'll discuss this later on okay anyway so this is the end of hydrocarbon chapter and uh, another thing is next class we'll do conformational a bit plus we also do p block okay whatever possible we can finish in one class because i think probably next class will be the last class we have for this session okay so we'll finish these two p block i would suggest you come prepare let's just go through a like this give it a read in the book we'll just discuss the important topics and i tell you what to uh, memorize and what to do in p block okay that will finish next class okay guys thank you take care bye bye in organic you must follow ncrt if you have time for NC after ncrt then you can go through the another books okay ncrt you must do yeah okay take care bye bye